Hi everybody, hope you're okay and keeping safe at home. We're up in Forest School this afternoon with Michael, John T, Macy and Bonnie and we thought we'd read you a story and I've chosen Sir Charlie Stinky Socks and the really big adventure. Once upon a time there was a deep dark forest where monster trees groaned, terrible beasties moaned and wiggly woos waited to tickle your toes. In the middle of the forest, surrounded by the thorny bushes, there stood a tall tower with a pointy roof. At the bottom of the tower was a big wooden door. Inside the tower was a windy, windy staircase, winding until it reached a little wooden door right at the very top. And what was behind that little wooden door? Well, nobody knew because nobody ever went there. The end. Oh no, they've crossed it out. At least not until the day when a bold, brave knight, Sir Charlie Stinky Socks and his faithful, fearless cat, Envelope, decided that the time had come for a really big adventure. So Charlie picked his best sword, packed some sandwiches, a big bottle of water and his favourite little something for the journey just in case. And with a song in his heart he mounted his good grey mare. Clip clop, clip clop, clippity clippity clop. Over the hills and far away rode Sir Charlie and his cat. Oh and a wily old witch following behind on a broom. Can you see her? There she is following. At last they came to a deep dark forest where monstrous trees groaned and terrible beasties moaned. Envelope shivered, the good grey mare quivered while the witch with the watch covered her eyes. Where is she? I don't know. Here she is covering her eyes. But brave Sir Charlie stood steady in his boots. Shh, he whispered into the woods. Tis I, Sir Charlie Stinky Socks, with a song to soothe you. And as Sir Charlie sang his lullaby, the trees stopped groaning. But their terrible beasties went on moaning. Stop your moaning, cried the knight. Come out and eat me, if you dare. <laughs> Out of the darkness crept six slobbering beasties. Here they are. There's purple and pink. That fearless cat envelope scarpered. The good grey mare fled. And even the wily witch with the watch trembled behind a tree. But bold Sir Charlie did not turn. Brave Sir Charlie did not run. Instead, he drew his trusty sword and did what good knights would do. He smiled and cut up his sandwiches. The beasties stood and stared. They were hairy, hideous creatures indeed, but they were more scared of Sir Charlie Stinky Socks than he was of them. Charlie fed the beasties and the beasties stopped moaning and the wily witch with the watch looked on with a grin and checked the time. But this was no way to end a really big adventure. So Sir Charlie Stinky Socks rescued his cat, rallied his good grey mare and set off once again, never minding the wiggly woos who waited in the grass or the six not so terrible beasties who followed him. Where is he going to go next? The forest grew thicker and the bushes became thorny. Lucky for Envelope and the good grey mare that Sir Charlie Stinky Socks led the way with his trusty sword. Whooshity thwack, whooshity thwack, whooshity thwack, choppity choppity chop. And then at last they came to a clearing in the trees where the sun threw down its pale yellow light onto a tall, tall tower, a big pointy roof. But it also threw light 
on to a long green, what is it? Dragon. A dragon. dragon. He was frightful and fearsome and coughing out fire while he stomped in a temper around the tower. Ha ha, thought Charlie Stinky Socks. Just the thing for a really big adventure. Stop your roaring dragon, he commanded. But the dragon didn't stop. He went on <coughs> coughing out fire. He went on belching out smoke. And now his eyes were fixed firmly on Sir Charlie Stinky Socks. Was this the end of the line for the bold brave knight? Oh my! Envelope didn't hang around to find out and neither did the good grey mare. Only a worried wily witch and a couple of wiggly woos watched. But bold Sir Charlie did not flinch. Brave Sir Charlie did not flicker. He took out his big bottle of water and kind clever Sir Charlie Stinky Socks gave the old dragon a long, cool drink. <sighs> now you stop coughing, said the knight to the long green dragon. Tell me, what's at the top of this tower? The dragon looked up. The dragon looked at Sir Charlie. The dragon scratched his scaly head and said, my dear old thing, I haven't a clue. It's not a dragon's place to ask, you know, just to do. Then why don't we find out, said Sir Charlie, with a grin. The wily witch took one last look at her watch, jumped for joy and flew off on her broom as Charlie pushed open the big wooden door. Up the windy, windy staircase marched Sir Charlie Stinky Socks. He didn't stop marching until he'd taken his faithful cat envelope his good grey mare, six knots of terrible beasties, a very curious long green dragon and a couple of wiggly woos right up to the very top. There he opened the little wooden door and peeked in. A big black cauldron stood in the middle of the room and stirring it was the wily witch, of course. By her side sat a little princess weeping and wailing in a pool of tears. Sir Charlie looked at the princess. Sir Charlie looked at the bubbling pot. Sir Charlie didn't wait another minute. He drew his trusty sword and bounded over to rescue the little princess. Stop your weeping, cried the knight. Sir Charlie Stinky Socks is here to save you from the pot. The witch, ha 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 ha, cackled with laughter. I'm not going to cook the princess, squealed the witch. I'm cooking the food for her birthday party. It's today at three, you see. I do it every year, you know. I blow up balloons and decorate the tower. I send out invitations, hundreds of them. And looky here, she cried, tapping her face of watch. It's nearly three, yippee. Then why are you crying, princess, asked Sir Charlie. Because, shrieked the princess, we live at the top of a windy, windy staircase in a tall, tall tower with a pointy roof, surrounded by thorns and guided, guarded by a fire-breathing dragon. And it's the middle of a deep, dark forest where wiggly woos wait in the grass to tickle your toes. Hungry beasties, Mo so nobody ever comes. Oh, yes, they do, said Sir Charlie as he flung open the door. Behold, Sir Charlie Stinky Socks and his friends. That night, the lights burned brightly in the tall, tall tower with the pointy roof as the happy little princess had a whip roaring good time. When the candles had been blown out and the cake eaten up, Sir Charlie Stinky Socks took out his favourite little something he had brought with him from home, just in case, and gave it to the princess. Many happy returns of the day, he said. And everybody cheered, hooray, 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 because that's what people do at the end of a really big adventure. Hope you're enjoying your adventure at home. See you soon.
Bye.